we are great English 9 students documenting stories of former students to celebrate Esquimalt High's centennial celebrations. We want to hear what alumni are doing now and what Esquimalt meant to them. We really appreciate you sharing your story with us. Um, what years did you attend Esquimalt? I was at Esquimalt from 2008 to 2012. Um, how is Esquimalt different from other schools you may have attended here? Um, I think in terms of other schools that I've attended in Victoria, Esquimalt was really unique for its diversity. So um, I think the fact that it was, you know, it had the challenge program, it had a French immersion program, it had the Stay Connected program, it had the culinary training program. It was basically, it was a place for like students from every background and every interest to come and, and just kind of share ideas, share creativity, share passion. So the diversity for me, like that was, and it's, it's my favorite thing about the school too, so it's going to come up a lot, but um, yeah, that was, that's been really, really unique. And um, it's actually shaped a lot of the decisions I've made about like which schools I want to go to in the future. So like which university I wanted to go to and like where I wanted to do my study abroad and where I want to travel and all of those things. Because having that diversity in high school you kind of become spoiled <laughs> yeah. and you forget that the, the majority of the world is actually quite normal and like quite, yeah. you know, focused or like if you go to, you go to a university somewhere in the States, you know, or even in Canada, you're going to have like a mostly white population that's like mostly upper middle class. That's like most of their family has been to university before. Most yeah. of them want to be academics. Whereas at, at Esquimalt, you have people who, like maybe academia wasn't their thing. Maybe maybe you know culinary arts wasn't their thing. Maybe automotives wasn't their thing. But everyone had something that they were interested in, and everyone had different backgrounds and stories and stuff. So mm -hmm. that's been really great. Cool. Uh, what was your favorite class or program? <laughs> My favorite class was actually calculus. <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> yeah, you know, it was funny. I definitely, I thought I was going to become like an, either go into architecture or go into physics or something. Mm -hmm. um, turns out I'm in psychology, so it was, it's been a bit of a change, but definitely calculus was, it was so much fun and it was challenging, so that was good. Yeah. You guys sit there and just be quiet. Thanks. Thanks for that. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the best memory you made here? Um, it would have to be something with all of my friends. Um, mm -hmm. I made like some really, really outstanding, ma I made friends and I also just like built friendships that I'd had since kindergarten. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of my early memories of, at Esquimalt were, um, actually in my math nine class with Mr. Schwab. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, I was really, really interested in math and, um, was super keen on all the homework sets and stuff. And there was um, another girl in the class who was also really keen, and but was really quiet and was new to the school. And I didn't I didn't know who she was yeah. and everything. And Mr. Schwab just kind of put us at the same bench and was like, "Why don't you two work on your homework sets together?" And it yeah. turned out that this girl Hyoji and I became like best friends for the whole of high school. And like I ended up going to visit her family in Seoul in South Korea, and. Like, we always, you know, shared our notes and math, and we spent all of our lunch together, like, doing yeah. calculus and, like, all of those fun things. So it was definitely, it was the first time that I'd experienced, like, another extreme nerd just like me. <laughs> so that was nice. Um, how did attending the Squimo maybe contribute to what you do or your career plans? Um... Well, obviously, when I was at Esquimalt, I, I thought I was going to become an architect. Like, that was my plan. Yeah. Um, I'm definitely not going to become an architect. <laughs> um, I, I really love psychology. But I yeah. think what but Esquimalt helped me kind of get to psychology because it encourages you to explore what you're really interested in and to yeah. be creative and to just kind of find something um, that you love and to just run with it. And I think... I had that idea about architecture when I was in Victoria, and then when I moved to university, I took a psychology class and I fell in love with it, and it was really creative, and so I was able to just run with that. So I think the Squamo gave me that creativity and that like passion to just go for it. At the same time, it also really provided me with the work ethic that I've needed for like no matter what career or academic pursuit I'm in, it's 
it's going to be important to have. So. Cool. Um, if you could think of the times you felt su- successful and where to pick one, can you tell us about it? As I was reading through these questions, this was the hardest one. <laughs> I think another thing that Esquimalt did for me was that it, it, with the work ethic, it cultivates like a drive to always be better and to never quite be satisfied with yourself. So I think that's a really hard question because they're like, even though I've had successes on paper, it's there haven't been that many times where I've been like, oh, I feel so successful. So, um, but if I had to pick one, it would probably be like in my final year at Esquimalt um, when I got into like the universities that I'd really wanted to. Um, and I got the Loran scholarship and it was a really kind of affirming experience because when I went to do the Loran interviews in Toronto, um, I was really, I wasn't, I didn't think I was going to get it. I was just there to have fun. And so I ended up just going into the interviews and like having conversations with these people and just totally being myself. So when I got the the scholarship, it felt like it was actually for me. Like it wasn't for anyone who had, it wasn't for an artificial version of myself or for like an over academic or over passionate version of myself. It was just really genuine. So having that sort of affirmation that they were interested in me and that they were like believed I could do something um it was just it was really nice it was like warm and fuzzy feelings and even though I I didn't end up taking the scholarship it was it was a nice a nice a nice experience yeah uh did you go on any school trips or participate on any of our team I didn't (laughs) um I didn't there I had a very um unlucky time in Squamal because we my years kind of passed through a whole bunch of strikes so a lot of yeah. school trips didn't happen mm-hmm. um and then in terms of teams I wasn't on any sports teams because I was always dancing um yeah. but I was in a lot of school clubs so like I was in escape and yeah. interact and leadership and all of those things and th- those were great like um being able to engage with social justice yeah really really formed sort of how I approach my academics now too so I you know I always consider my research with sort of policy implications or with how I can make the world a better place while researching little infants or eat yeah. researching the brain <laughs> yeah. okay um I don't know if this applies to you at the moment but can you describe your job to us I guess it's so, I was wondering that, too. I was wondering whether you were going to ask it. I guess yeah. my job would be a student, right? Yeah. So, um, yes. So my job right now, I'm studying uh, abroad at the University of Cambridge um, from my usual studies at Columbia University in New York City. Yeah. And I'm studying psychology and neuroscience. And specifically, my research is started to focus on developmental neuroscience. So it's basically how the brain develops in like the very, very early years, and also how behavior develops. So yeah. my jobs, if you will, <laughs> are yeah. testing infants' prejudices. <laughs> so whether or not they have biases and stereotypes and yeah. um, like sort of automatic assumptions that they make about the world. Um, I, I guess that probably answers your question. Oh my God! Everybody's being loud. <laughs> um, do you have any particular stories from your experience at university or your work that you can share with us? Um, hmm. I was I was wondering about this. So, in terms of my research, it's actually well. I do have one story that's kind of nice. So, um, yeah. some of my research has taken me like far afield, which has been really cool. Um, so. Last summer, I was I got funding from my university to go to Nicaragua to do comparative research on um, howler monkeys, which are like a New World monkey. Yeah. Um, in uh, like they're, they're all through South America, but there's a large population on Ometepe in Nicaragua. And I was looking at mother juvenile behavioral synchrony. So <laughs> I know that sounds like a big buzzword, but it's basically whether the the babies align with the, the, the mother's um, mm-hmm. behaviors, like whether they're feeding at the same time or walking at the same time and stuff. And it's thought to be kind of an early evolutionary example of whether there's behavioral learning going on. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so my story is that, well, 
in order to do this research, you have to literally follow the monkeys in, yeah. in a field, like in a forest. Yeah. Um, and there was one day where all the other researchers were sick um, because we, <laughs> they all got food poisoning and yeah. lucky me, <laughs> I managed to evade it. So I headed off with a guide on my own yeah. and we were sitting in this forest in the middle of Nicaragua. It's the first time I've ever been to South America. First time I've ever been in this like 45 degree heat that was just ridiculous. And he falls asleep under one of the trees. So I'm completely alone. It's completely quiet. And there are just these monkeys all around me and like little tiny baby monkeys that are like two weeks old and clinging to their moms. And I'm like, it was a really, really cool experience. And the sun was, the sun was shining through and you just get to look up and they start making these little like cooing sounds. And um, it was definitely like, one of the times in my life where I felt the most peaceful and like the most yeah. kind of calm and like everything's going to be okay because I'm with my monkeys <laughs> and at the same time like what the hell am I doing here I'm in the middle yeah. of the forest with like a, a guy that's asleep like if someone comes with a machete I'm dead so yeah. it was definitely it was it was a, an, am an amazing experience yeah um how is a squamal I guess I guess this doesn't apply to you also because you're not physically here, <laughs> but uh, how was Esquimalt different from maybe when you attended or any improvements or renovations since then? You'd have to, you'd have to tell me. I'd have to, I'd have to bring you around, yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. <laughs> that was, I probably couldn't know. <laughs> um, if you had to choose a symbol for Esquimalt, what would it be and why? Um, it sounds cheesy, but yeah. you know those pictures with like all the hands and they're all different colors and they're all like grasping each other and kind of like supporting each other yeah that was that was immediately came to mind because yeah. in a squirrel there's definitely as i said there's definitely that feeling of diversity of um sort of everyone coming with their own background everyone coming with their own experience um and there's also an amazing um environment of support uh, yeah. from the teachers and from the other students. So something something to do with like giving a hand um, yeah. through diversity and with diversity. Yeah. Um, what would you, what advice would you give to future Esquimalt students? Um, do what you love. Yeah. <laughs> Again, it sounds cheesy, but it's really, like I think my, some of the favorite moments of my life have just been like m taking complete changes in my life path. So having thought that I was going to become an architect for since I was seven or something, and then going to one psychology lecture and realizing that this is way more interesting and this, you know, this gets me really excited. And having the courage and the creativity and the ability to, to just take that on and say, okay, this is going to be great. Another thing I would say is, when you're looking for universities or looking for, for jobs or for anywhere you want to work, um, yeah. to look at the people you're going to be working with mm -hmm. um, because surrounding yourself with a, a supportive and a kind community is way more important than prestige and way more important than, you know, salary or the type of work you're going to be doing um, yeah. because you can definitely get a toxic environment and that's no good for mental health. 